Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Tier Zoo, and the video is The Fish Tier List. Not been reacting to the channel a lot recently, but I like the videos, and it's just fun to see different types of animals, different types of species, or whatever you want to say, and how he ranks them. I don't know how he's going to rank the fish, because could you consider... This is going to sound so stupid. Like, whales and sharks. I know they're not considered... Like, they're not considered fish, but what are they actually considered? I don't know. Unless sharks are just their own sort of thing. I mean, a fish, there's so many different species of fish. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, maybe they'll be included in this. I assume they won't, though, because obviously I just don't think they would be considered that. But anyway, I'm just talking too much in this intro. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon if you want to see extra reactions of mine. But let's get into this video and see how he ranks these fish and what fish are in these videos. Piranhas. Because that's like the the baddest fish I can think of. I mean, would they be ranked higher? Or is it because they're sort of the kinds of fish that will hunt together? Maybe not. I don't know. We're going to check this out. What? what? <laughs> what is going on? Oh, uh, you got him there, man. Oh, is that a fish? Oh, it was a fish. This video was made in partnership with Curiosity it. Stream. They popular among getting his money. And with so yeah, many love to see it. Meta. I mean, there are more than three. Go through the tier list of fish. This will by no means be a comprehensive tier list. I mean, there are more than three thousand variants of the catfish build alone. Still, by highlighting the standout builds in both high what? and low tiers, hopefully, That's I can crazy. give you a good understanding of where the fish faction fits into the current meta. And if there's a fish Current I didn't matter. include, hopefully by seeing my logic in this video, <laughs> you'll be able to evaluate that fish. Oh, building. that poor turtle, man. Oh, he's getting absolutely smoked by this tiny little fish. He just wants some peace and quiet, fish man. I didn't include, hopefully by seeing my logic <laughs> in this video, you'll be able to evaluate that fish build Aww. yourself. Oh, also, quick disclaimer, since I've already made a shark tier oh, list, I'm omitting sharks from this video. But before we dive into oh, the tier list, first I want to give you an overview of the abilities commonly found in the fish faction as well as some background on the history of the fish build. So the basic fish build doesn't have much in terms of unique perks or abilities, which is actually great as it means that each player has a lot of room for customization. The basic fish what? build is most famous for its use of the fin and gill abilities, both of which offer huge advantages in water while predictably being entirely useless on land. Back during the Devonian expansion, oh, fuck long me. before the vertebrate faction had unlocked terrestrial that builds, caught me off guard, fish man. were the that legit caught me off guard. ...in water, while predictably being entirely useless on land. Back during the Devonian expansion, oh, shot before up. the vertebrate faction had unlocked terrestrial builds, <laughs> fish were the top tier build in the game, having a crushing matchup against the top arthropods, their main competitors. In today's meta though, fish have to compete with a lot more than just arthropods, and typically place below the top marine builds like cetaceans and cephalopods. And with the nerfs to the Plagoderm armor ability that fish used to have access to, Fish have had to get creative with their game strategies in order to survive the current meta. Now let's get into the tier list to see which strategies and abilities are worth specking into if you're a fish player. I see the lowest ranked. Oh, see yours. Come on. Strange build with the lowest mobility stat of any. See, they're one of those things that I've never actually like seen videos on. I, you, like, I've heard about them. They're like, they're like the most unique sort of fish or whatever sea creatures, but I've never actually seen them in videos or anything. I don't think this is my first time seeing them, but it's definitely the first time in a long time that I've seen these like in a real life sort of picture or like a video kind Any of thing. Any fish in the game. This mobility stat is due entirely to their strange choice to spec into the prehensile tail ability. Don't the men give birth to the children with these animals? At the cost of all but one of their fins. Now, don't get me wrong, the prehensile tail ability can be extremely useful, especially for arboreal builds that use them to tether themselves to trees while keeping their hands and legs free for foraging. For a marine build though, I think there are better choices available. All the prehensile tail does is allow the seahorse to anchor itself to plants and rocks, they preventing so itself cute. from getting tossed around by the current, <laughs> which again, it wouldn't need to do if it didn't lack fins. Now, they do have pretty solid oh. armor, which can make them difficult to actually take out. Really? Now, they do have pretty solid armor, which can make them difficult to actually take out. Damn. But their extreme lack of mobility means the seahorse cannot dodge attacks. This leads them to getting smacked around by any player who feels like it, even ones without any special combat perks. And with their best matchup oh. being against Plankton, to me there's no way the seahorse places any higher than f Yeah. They haven't been gifted by, like, evolution, have they? Let's be real. 
cute though. Also in F tier we have the Ocean Sunfish. This probably isn't too shocking given that the sunfish is famously bad at defending itself. Wait, what? But for those unaware, the ocean sunfish has the highest HP so stat of any fish in the game and relies on its giant size for protection. Huge. Similar to the seahorse, the sunfish's other stats are all extremely low and because of this, the sunfish gets bullied hard by many of the common marine threats, both large and small. They get but it hasn't bit. got a flipping... what do they call it? Not a fin? Doesn't have the thing at the back. I'm gonna say a tail. I don't know. I can't, my terminology is on the ropes. But surely this means that you can't swim very quick either. And tossed around particularly badly by the mammalian player, large and small. It's huge. They get Look at this. Bits and tossed around particularly the badly by the mammalian team. player base. Sea lions and orcas, in particular, love flexing their superiority over the Mad. largest fish build in the game. But the sunfish has another huge weakness: parasites. See, the sunfish has soft, mucus-coated skin instead of the scales traditionally used by fish players. This makes the sunfish more vulnerable to parasites, which unfortunately means that even the best sunfish mains have to play while suffering from a wide variety of debuffs from parasite infestations. Oh, the sunfish players often solicit the help of support mains like the ras and shrimp to help cleanse themselves, and may even sit at the water really? surface to give bird mains the chance to attack the parasites. What? The gigantism strategy is usually a pretty reliable strategy for avoiding attacks. Elephants, whales, That's hippos, kind of smart though, when you think about it. The fact that they, if that's actually true and he's not just trolling me, it's kind of smart that they think to do that. Because, I mean, that's one way to help them survive for longer, I guess. I don't know mate, if it's actually true though. Maybe he's literally just trolling me, but I'm going to take his word for it, you know. are generally safe from attacks once they reach their max size. However, I think in order to make the strategy work, you need to actually be able to strike back to discourage repeated attacks. Otherwise, you're kind of just a damage sponge oh, an and will have your HP slowly whittled down, Four as we often rhino. see happen to the sunfish mains. So because of all these vulnerabilities and over-reliance on support players for help, I have to place the ocean sunfish in F tier. But do you think it should be ranked the same as the seahorse? I mean, it probably should do because of like the whole bacteria stuff or whatever, but still... The Seahorse just seems like it should be in its own league in terms of like what it can actually do. The fly The flying oh, fish okay. is a build with an extremely unique playstyle centered around maximizing mobility. By putting a huge Mental. amount of evolution points into their fin trait and mobility. How evolution can do this kind of stuff? It's just nuts. Like what caused these fish to just be able to fly? It's mental. Mobility stat. They've actually gained the ability to glide through the air for surprisingly long distances. This is useful as an escape option when being attacked by a larger fish player. However, as unique a move as this is, I actually think this is a pretty poor strategy overall. Being airborne might put you out of range of an attack from another fish, but it's by no means a safe position and in many cases is actually seriously disadvantageous. Bird Without any way to dodge attacks midair, flying fish are extremely vulnerable to bird attacks, oh. which kind of nullifies the benefit of escaping an aquatic pursuer. And in addition, with no way to change direction midair, it's actually not that difficult for said fish player to just intercept the flying fish's landing. So oh. overall, God not that useful anyway. an ability tacked onto an otherwise unremarkable build. Salmon. Also, indeed, here we have the salmon family. Now, I think for the taste alone, you've just got to rank them higher. Maybe not in terms of their actual like abilities when they're alive, but when they're gone, bro, they they should be ranked higher just for Which that alone. the fish builds like the trout and the char. This build actually has some pretty impressive stats, with high mobility being pretty much required in order to withstand the constant rushing flow of the rivers that they use as their respawn points. Similar to the flying fish, this playstyle is also highly vulnerable that to bear disruption is from hungry. non players. As impressive as it is that salmon and trout mains are able to make these insane jumps, the sad truth is that the thing that they're most well known for is being an easy source of XP for carnivore players. Damn. Now, this jumping ability is also useful for attacking flying builds midair, but the salmon's power stat isn't quite enough Double to be able to kill. take down anything that isn't far below their weight class. Catfish. At the bottom of C tier, we have the catfish. These are quite scary. One though. of the tankier builds on this list with a bulky yet versatile... They they do spook me out a little bit. They're one of those fish that just look like aliens, man. Stats, Brett. A lot of players undervalue the catfish and see it as low-tier trash due to it being a bottom feeder, not realizing that they've actually got a few decent unique abilities, most important <coughs> of which is their venom. Rather than specking their venom. fin appendages to do things like flying or flexing, the catfish build spec into fins that have barbs on them, which can deliver a venomous sting. 
While their Venom usually isn't able to deal lethal damage, it's still a decent defensive ability. It does have its weaknesses though, particularly to long, disjointed hitboxes, such as the spear-like beaks of some bird builds. Oh, Nonetheless, damn. the Catfish is still a reliable and easy to play build, being omnivorous and able to gain plenty of XP simply by digging through the mud for scraps. Wait, are those Catfish's babies? Is that what... <clears throat> Anchorfish. Also in C tier we have the Archerfish. Archerfish. The fish. only fish build mm. with the ability to use a ranged attack. This projectile deals essentially zero damage, <laughs> but it's by no means useless. Damn. This projectile has high knockback, making it excellent for pushing players into vulnerable positions. Go on. A waterlogged insect is one of the easiest targets in the game. Bro, that is cold. That's got better aim than me. I I, I don't know what that's, how, that, how that comes across, but like... Bro, if I had like spit in my mouth or water in my mouth, then you spit it. Bro, that's some good accuracy, man. And being able to force that type of interaction is an extremely powerful ability. Yeah, and This ability on. does have its limitations, though. As is the case with most projectiles, this attack is unusable in the water, meaning that the Archerfish doesn't really have any good moves for PvP against other aquatic players. Yeah. I think the biggest weakness of this playstyle, though, is the position that you're forced into in order to make use of your projectile weapon. Being near the surface of the water leaves you vulnerable to both attacks from below and above, and with no defense against either, the Archerfish is a high-risk, decent reward build. See, that's hard to judge because I do agree, in the water you're screwed, but out of the water you've sort of managed to think and evolve to do stuff out of your realm and like go to land or whatever, and you're just spitting on animals to get them to come to you so you can eat them. I mean, it's quite smart, but... Yeah, other than that, if you're not near land or whatever it is, you're, you're pretty screwed. In B tier, we have the builds that are generally solid picks, but lack any truly overpowered abilities. First is the Bass, the poster child for the phrase, big fish in a small pond. With solid stats and the ability to grow larger than most other freshwater lake fish, the Bass can easily dominate their local scene, even to the point of depleting the area of resources by gobbling them all up. Frog. Their generalist nature and large jaws I mean they can prey upon just about anything from smaller fish to crustaceans to even builds like frogs and alligators. While there's not that much that's flashy or unique about this strategy, there's no denying that the bass is a consistent threat in the pond meta, and I consider them the gatekeepers of the higher tiers. Also in B tier we have the fish faction's premier support oh class, days. the Cleaner Ross. The Cleaner Ross specializes in cleansing larger fish players of parasites providing an extremely useful service in the form of removing debuffs from any fish player in need, similar to the Oxpecker on land. Parasites are a major threat to fish players, so it's no surprise that oftentimes even top tier builds like Sharks will add cleaner Ross players to their party. Ross do have to rely on their reputation to protect them though, and while betrayals during cleansing sessions are rare, Oh my swimming god, look at the size of- this is a fish! Mate, that is a monstrous- been monstrous fish into a mouthful of dagger like teeth is not without risk. All right, now we're in A tier, and this is where things start to get a bit overpowered. First, we have the Pickerel Guild, which includes the Pike and Muscalunge, the Pike, most fearsome freshwater fish in the game. Big ass fish. These vicious fish builds are highly aggressive and attack anything in or around their domain, from fish to birds to mammals and even humans. Their powerful jaws sport Birds. sharp crocodile esque teeth which deal serious damage and grip their target, preventing their escape. But it's not just about power with these fish. Their slender body and camouflage allow them to easily hide in cover, waiting for the perfect ambush opportunity. And unlike trout, when these fish jump, it's not just to clear an obstacle. They jump to attack. Their oh. only weakness is a slow growth rate and long respawn time. Is that a cat? Jump, but I don't want to see that levels, again. These fish are adept hunters. While not part of the Pickerel Guild, I also include the Barracuda in this same rating, Looking as they have a very similar playstyle. Giant rapid. size is not a requirement to be a high- Look how quick that is! God damn, it's like Usain, the Usain Bolt of the water, man! While not part of the Pickerel Guild, I also include the Barracuda in this same rating, as they have a very similar playstyle. Giant size is not a requirement to be a high tier predator, though, as exemplified by the next build on this list, the Piranha. Here we go! Speaking of the devil. Piranhas are one of the best, if not the best, example of how with the right combination of special abilities and team strategies, size genuinely doesn't matter. Their special ability, Feeding Frenzy, 
boosts Piranha Shoal DPS to one of the highest in the game, able to absolutely melt through the HP of even the tankiest targets. In contrast to the Salmon and Trout, because of their favorable matchup against larger players, Piranhas <laughs> are the only fish builder oh, on this no. list that I think actually make great use of its positional advantage in rivers, as many mammals and birdmates will be forced to cross your territory over the course of their playthrough and fall victim to your frenzy attacks. Their main weakness is a lack of defensive capability, meaning that they can still be easily one-shot by other Predator players. The next build on this tier list does Here's not share eyes. this weakness. Just getting popped out, Lionfish. The Lionfish is one of the most well-defended fish builds in the game, relying on a huge arsenal of venomous spines to deal serious damage to attackers. It's a small one, similar to, be to fair. the Porcupine build on land. Because of this, the Lionfish is an infamously unpleasant target to attack, and most Predator players tend to either ignore or actively avoid them. While their <laughs> other stats are quite low, this certainly hasn't stopped them from rising to dominance in their home server of the Indo-Pacific. Lionfish are also generalists, who gobble up anything that their low mobility stat allows them to catch, oh, which can quickly deplete a server of its resources. And because of their quick respawn rate, Lionfish have rapidly spread to other ocean servers without much pushback, at least until they reach the tropical Atlantic. See, there is one fish build that has been able to consistently take down Lionfish, and once I show you how broken some of their abilities are, it'll be easy to understand why. We've got two more builds to showcase in S2, you. but real quick, I just want to point out that this is the longest video I've made so far, and took a huge amount of time and resources to produce. So if you're enjoying it and want more content like this, please do consider subscribing. Thanks. Shout out to this guy. Moray Eel, so it is an eel. The Moray Eel is one of the most uniquely powerful fish in the game, with a set of strange yet highly functional that abilities powerful. and well-placed base stat allocations. So first, their stats. While the highest aquatic power rating falls to sharks and whales, a close runner-up is the Moray. Their teeth resemble broken glass and can do similarly brutal damage in combat. Fuck their mobility me. is surprisingly high for a fish that lacks pectoral and pelvic fins. But in addition to having great maneuverability in the tight spaces of a reef, they're capable of some pretty impressive bursts of speed too. Their stealth may seem low due to their vibrant coloring, but honestly, bright colors are everywhere in reef servers, so they don't stick out too much. In fact, their ability to contort and fit into crevices and other tight spaces gives them a pretty huge advantage for ambushing other players. Oh my god! Where things get interesting though is with their what? defense. <laughs> jump scares me, man. I hate this sort of stuff when it jumps out on the screen. Huge advantage for ambushing other players. Oh. Where things mate. get interesting though is with their defense. The Moray <laughs> has a slime-based special ability, which serves multiple defensive purposes. It protects them from taking abrasion and puncture damage while passing through sharp coral and jagged spaces within the reef. But perhaps more surprisingly, it's great at deflecting damage from things like teeth and spikes. Not only does this give them a great matchup against sharks, but it also makes them one of the only builds in the game capable of taking down the lionfish. This excellent Shit. matchup spread makes placing the moray eel in S tier an easy decision. Billfish, this is like a the bad final build boy on this fish, list is the billfish. This includes the marlin, swordfish, and sailfish, all of which have similar playstyles. This group is top tier for two reasons. First is that they have the highest swim speed in the game, beating out not just all other fish, but also mammals and birds. In this addition, is such a cool... Is this a real video? Look at... If this is actually real, that's so sick. You got like some flipping swordfish and you got this seal here and you got all these other fish around it's just cool to see all of them mixed together but also mammals and birds in addition to having unmatched speed their large dorsal fins allow them to make tighter turns than most fish too making them extremely good at chasing down prey their most unique trait however is their bill one of the strangest offensive abilities in the game useful oh, for both damn. slashing and stabbing this attack is one of the few in the game able to hit multiple targets at once this makes it excellent for countering the ubiquitous safety in numbers strategy many fish players adopt. And since the billfish hunt in packs, they can rack up insane kill counts, rivaling the hunting prowess of even a pot of dolphins. With busted stats and a signature move that's both flashy and downright broken, to me there's no question that the billfish is but the most overpowered fish build. What do they do when they get the fish stuck in their nose and then it like, I guess they just shake it and they just shake their heads and then it just comes off their nose or whatever but yeah i mean i guess it's probably easier than i'm thinking but imagine it just gets stuck and you just got a fish stuck there and you can't get it off in the game 
Regardless of where your favorite fish build falls on the tier list, one thing's for sure. Adaptation is key to survivability in the current meta. And it's important to always be exploring new strategies to stay ahead of the curve. The current meta. The same can be said for YouTubers, and this is why a Go bunch on. of players and I- Get in his money, you love to see it. Good video as well, I enjoyed this a lot. This tier zoo, like, these sort of videos, it's just, it's just fun to see, man. And he obviously knows his stuff. And he just mixes it with these memes and stuff. But yeah, hopefully enjoy this reaction. If you want more of these videos for me to see, let me know what, let me know what you want to see next. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.